today I'm going to give you a quick little video on how to use the Bernina stitch regulator. It comes in a little tin like this, has a little instruction book, the packing is all very uh, secure to keep her safe. So this is the stitch regulator itself. The way it works is it has a little sensor under here and let me see if I can get focused on here. There we go. There's a little sensor under here that determines how fast you move your fabric and then it will adjust the speed automatically for you. So in your box you have three sole plates. There, It comes with the closed toe on. What's on mine now is the open toe and then there's this clear disc one. To change the sole plate you just push the two buttons here on the side and it comes loose and then you put on whatever sole plate you want goes right in the little side channels there See that? and then just snaps on so most of the time I prefer the open toe plate because I feel like I can get a better vision with that so I'm going to put this one back on it goes on your machine just like a regular foot would it does sit at a little bit of an angle so the cone goes in here and you move the little lever around that little post there to hold it in place and then you have this little pigtail and this gets plugged into the machine either on the back of your machine or underneath your machine it depends on what model you have and on some of the 5 series there's actually a little um, a lip that if you don't get this turned vertically it won't connect and engage all the way so I'm going to show you that next all right, here's my foot. I'm going to put it on my machine. It goes on just like a regular foot. You can see how I attached it there. And then this little pigtail will connect either underneath your machine here. If you have that style, there will be a green circle. However, on my machine, and sorry, you're going to get a little bit dizzy for a minute. There is a little... Okay, there we go move this here there we go and this is the back of the machine there's a little plug-in right here this is a 790 and it fits right in there on some 5 series models there's a little lip of uh, plastic right here and this hook has to be vertical in order for it to engage and then once you have it plugged in the screen will change so if it's plugged in correctly the screen will change and it reminds you to lower your feed dog. So I'm going to do that now. And that goes away. And then this is our BSR screen. You have a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. And a mode 1 and a mode 2. That's all you have. Normally I use straight. Occasionally um, zigzag might be used for uh, thread painting. Um, but most of the time I am on the straight. And most of the time I'm on mode 1. The difference between mode 1 and mode 2 is that in mode 1, when the stitch regulator in, is engaged, the needle will go up and down slowly, waiting for you to start moving the fabric. So if you're sitting there trying to decide where to move your fabric, that needle is going up and down and making a knot. In mode 2, the needle will sit in the up position and wait for you to start moving the fabric and then start moving. So most of the time I will start in mode one and I will use my foot control if I need to stop. Now that's on my 790. When I had my 440, I preferred mode two. So I'm gonna get my um, fabric ready to go and I'm gonna show you how I quilt. All right, this next part's gonna be a little bit difficult because I gotta hold my phone with one hand and try and so with the other hand. So this is a placemat panel. Let's see if I can show the whole thing here. I have it layered with batting and my backing fabric and safety pinned to hold the layers together. And one of the easiest ways to get used to using your stitch regulator is with a panel of some sort because you don't have to worry about ruining your quilt because you didn't put any effort really into piecing this quilt. It's just a panel. In this case, just a small placemat. So it's going to be easy to maneuver. 
and you know small enough that I can fit it under the throat of my machine easily handle it easily and be done quickly so I already have a thread loaded in my machine so this I picked monofilament which is invisible thread because I've got lots of different colors on here and I didn't want to try and decide what color to use where and then I have black in my bobbin thread because the backing fabric is mostly black the tricks I have three tips for using monofilament thread you want to use a metallic needle you want to lower your top tension which I have not done yet and I'll show you how to do that and you want to use an external thread stand because monofilament likes to have more room to unwind all right so here is my top thread tension so I'm going to touch that and then I'm going to take it down I'm going to start with two and a half and see how that works all right so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where to start and then I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread so I think I'll start right here that's somewhat in the middle of the quilt my little placemat and let's see how well I can do this with one hand all right so I'm going to turn my hand wheel and line my needle up where I want to start and I want to start right at that point and then I'm going to hold the top thread Let's see if I can do that with this hand okay sorry about that hold the top thread and I'm going to push my needle down button which is on the front of my machine and I'm going to push it again so that it comes back up and I'm going to pull that top thread and it will bring up that loop of bobbin thread and then I'm going to pull this through this will prevent getting a knot on the back side of my quilt and on my machine on the 790 this is the needle up needle down button all right so the other thing that is very handy are quilting gloves let me back up a little bit so you can see these these happen to be machine gears, but they have little rubber tips on the end so that your hand doesn't slip as easily on the fabric you don't have to work so hard to hang on to it you just put the little gloves on and the little rubber tips help you hang on to that all right I'm all set up here to quilt and I got uh, my phone set up so that I can use both hands now so I have brought my bobbin thread up I've got my needle exactly where I want to start and then in order to engage the the stitch regulator I'm going to step on the foot control so normally that foot control will control the speed, right? I press on it a little, I sew slow, I press on it a lot, I sew fast. And then in this case, the foot control is merely an on or off switch. What controls the speed is how fast I move the fabric. So, and I remember I'm in mode one. So when I, and I just now took my foot back off so I could um, talk to you a little bit about this. In mode one, the needle is going to go up and down slowly waiting for me to move the fabric all right so here we go now i'm going to start moving my fabric and i'm just going to follow the line around the pumpkin and so if i move slower it stitches slower if i move faster it stitches faster on the corners i'm going to go kind of slow and I kind of want to stop and pause for a second at those corners so that I get a nice corner. Now, the nice thing about using panels is, you know what, if I go off the line a little bit, no big deal. I'm really not stressing about that a lot. I'm going kind of slow. And if I move faster, it sews faster. Now I'm coming up on a pin here. So I took my foot off the foot control so that it would stop. I'm going to get my handy dandy little quick clip if you don't have one of these they're pretty awesome uh there it is quick clip um, but it has these little ridges on the end to help you open and close safety pins it saves your nails okay now i'm getting ready to put my foot on the foot control again and if you'll notice when it's engaged there'll be a little red light that illuminates underneath the stitch regulator see that red light that means it's on and ready for me and I'm just gonna work my way around the pumpkins again if I go faster it's 
going to stitch faster. If I go slower, it's going to stitch slower. Oops, I overshot that one a little bit. And I'm, again, I'm not too worried about this. It's just a placemat. I'm not going to stress over it. Whoops. Probably should have taken that safety pin out. And when I first started using the stitch regulator, this pin is going to have to come out. Um, it probably took me five or six um, baby size panels to feel comfortable using the stitch regulator on any kind of panel I wanted to do, any kind of pattern I wanted to quilt. So a lot of times I'll use templates and follow the line on the template. It's really rather difficult to follow a line though, believe it or not. Um, what else did I want to say? So, oh, the great thing about using um, like baby panels for quilting is baby don't care if you miss the line. Baby just wants a blankie to stay warm. So you don't have to get really stressed about being perfect on your quilting. You didn't have a lot invested in it. You know, not a lot of time and effort, maybe a little bit of money to buy the panel and that's it. But baby is just happy to have a little quilt to keep him warm. So you don't have to uh, stress too much about using a baby panel. And if you don't have any babies in the family to give it to, donate it. All right, so I see something going on here and I'm gonna point this out because I'm gonna rip this out. See those little black dots? That's my bobbin thread coming up. So um, my top thread tension is still too tight. I had it at uh, two and a half. I'll probably take it down to maybe 1.75, something like that. I might try two first and then I'll bring it up. But anyway, you get the idea. That's how you use your stitch regulator when you're done with it. Make sure you put her back in her box because she's very expensive. So. You want to make sure you take care of it and uh, good luck. All right. One other thing I want to show you, and I'm going to do this clear over here in the margin. I want to show you what happens when you move faster than it can sew. And then I also want to show you the difference between mode one and mode two. All right. So if I sew faster than the machine can sew, so there it's engaged. If I move really fast, do you hear that squeal? That is telling me that I'm moving the fabric faster than it can sew. And then also right here, let me turn my camera just a bit so you can see. This will turn red. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go backwards this time because I don't want to hit that pin. The squeal and the light turned red. That's my indication that I'm moving my fabric faster than my machine can sew and it can't keep up. And then the other thing I wanted to show you, so I'm going to just step on the gas here, my foot control. My needle is moving up and down slowly. That's mode one. Now, if I go to mode two and I push my foot control to engage it, my red light is on underneath here, indicating that it's on, but the needle's up waiting for me to move the fabric. As soon as I move the fabric, it will start to sew. I stop and it stops. And I'm going to zoom in, zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little better. All right, so I'm still on mode two. I engage the foot control. The red light indicates that the BSR is engaged. And then when I move the fabric, it starts to sew. Now, I just took my foot off the foot control. I went to mode one. I push on the foot control and the needle goes up and down in place and will sew faster when I move the fabric. It doesn't stop sewing until I take my foot off the foot control. All right, I think that was all I wanted to show you. Have fun.